his boss says it all, he's lost control. And he's clinging to the nearest skirt in sight in fear, he's lost control. My name is Book Matambo. I'm an artist from Johannesburg. I make all kinds of different music, work as a producer and a vocalist, and yeah, I've got an album coming out on the 13th of March. And you're on Sub Pop now? Yes. Which is pretty awesome. Yes, it's exciting. It's exciting. Yes. I mean, it's exciting to different people to different degrees. A lot yes. of people are like, who? And then a lot of people get really excited. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, because of all the legacy, especially in an artist they still have, and I mean, why yes. Sub Pop? Because uh, they asked. Not many people had asked. Mm. And they gave a good offer, they've been really supportive, mm. and yeah, it's cool to have a record label kind of behind me like that. Are In a lot of ways, this feels like my first album, because okay. it's the first one that's going to be internationally distributed. Yes. The other one was mainly just, I think, America and UK, mm. and then on the net. I've never really presented myself to South Africa, mm. really, you know what I mean? A couple of magazines have featured my music and I've been working to communicate with the whole world. I've never really directed my communication at any one market. Mm. But this time I'm excited to go through conventional, you know, really conventional routes, TV, radio. And I think South Africa is a country where if a song is played enough on radio and if a song is played enough on TV, people can get into it. Mm. It's not like music, certain kinds of music is like totally alien. <laughs> And uh, yeah, the standard of music is about what I make, you know mm. what I mean? It's not like I'm from another planet. And I try not to be. I want people in South Africa to get into my stuff. Mm. I want it to be dialogue, I want it to be communication. Mm. Yeah, I don't really see the point of like, you know, trying to be, trying to be the outsider. That's not, I'm not into that. Do you think Kwaito was, in to a certain extent, sort of the South African version of punk in terms of what it represented socially, uh, post-94 uh, youth sort of voicing themselves through music or having other people sort of speak for a generation? Yeah, in some senses it was. Mm. In another sense it was from such hard years throughout the 70s and 80s and student uprisings and political consciousness quite there was the breaking point where the youth's consciousness shifted exploded into a party and a celebration and that wave hasn't really crashed although like the aids pandemic kind of took you know affected that wave of like hedonism mm -hmm. um i think that it represented that a lot as well okay and then let's just get back to the visuals. Um. But I, I don't think all the way, I mean, I don't think quite there was like Mzawa Lazo music mm. on one hand. On the other hand, where it was, it very much was, you know. Mm. Bas Don't Call Me Kafir is a revolutionary yeah. song in its way. And it's real to like those people and our generation and yeah. I guess I was a little lighty when I first heard it, but I knew exactly what it meant because, you know, if I was in a fight at school, people would call me Kafir and I had that antagonism and Arthur put it in, in whatever way he did. Mm.